G'day everybody, well, it's time for a video. Today we've got a uh, special little project we're going to uh, make a start on. Now I've got this uh, four cylinder Bitso refrigerant compressor from work a while ago. came out of a uh, decent sized system. Um, originally the, uh, the bearings um, failed in it because the oil splasher had uh, pretty much ripped itself into two pieces. I found it both sitting down the bottom of the uh, the casing, the crankcase, when I uh, opened it up. But, uh, I managed to find another um, oil splasher and also uh, uh, another front plate because it did destroy its uh, front bearing and also the main one of the main ro motor bearings. But what we're going to do with this is we're going to remove the original motor since it's too big to be able to drive on a domestic power supply. And we're going to cut a hole in the back housing, back end plate, and extend the crankshaft out through the casing with a bearing on it to support it. And we're going to convert this to an open drive compressor. Now I've never seen this done before, it could be a YouTube first if it does work. That's a big if, because it may not, it may go hor horribly wrong, blow itself up. But uh, all the same, it should be interesting because I've never seen this done before to a semi-hermetic compressor. So the uh, main focus we're going to um, look at today is just pulling it apart and um, removing the motor stator from it. I'm going to uh, hang it up with a chain block. I bought that today too just for this. Um, I'm going to hang it by the stator, by the windings, and then heat this casing up. Hopefully it should expand just enough to let go and uh, I'll be able to pull a stator out of this. Not only will that lighten this thing up, but it'll also free up some space in there to uh, make a coupling up. So what I want to do is this is the original crankshaft from it. And I got this stub off of a, uh, a two-cylinder crankshaft. That's the end of it there. And I'll just cut it on the lathe, which is behind me there. What we're going to do is we're going to figure out a way to join that together like that and then probably have a, uh, a coupler or a sleeve or something over that to hold it then we're going to put a bearing on this end once I've got a hole in it probably in the self-aligning bearing so I can center it on there and then uh, machine that down so I can fit a pulley or a coupling or something to it and then drive it with either another electric motor or even a small engine or something so uh, let's get it in pieces and have a look. Alrighty, here we have it. Bits are uh, everywhere, pretty much. These are all pistons from it too. I've got no rust on them, which is good, even though they are aluminium. Um, I have numbered every single one of them too, so that I know uh, which whichever cylinder they come came out of, they go back in. So uh, that's also the the orientation for the bearings. Um, that's a very important thing for when you are uh, rebuilding engines and other compressors and small bits of machinery is say for instance it spends say, I don't know, 50,000 hours wearing, running in one position when you pull it apart you're going to be disturbing the bearings and things um, and you want to make sure that when you put it back together that they go together exactly the same way as they came apart so these surfaces will be con in contact with the same areas on the crankshaft and whatever the bit journals um, that they were originally in contact with when uh, it was running um, otherwise you get excessive wear and even failure now, not that you usually bother rebuilding these little compressors because they're not generally worthwhile. Um, but yeah, you can definitely see the amount of wear on that. I mean, that's still alright, that surface in there. But it'll still um, work just fine. And I even have two, two spare pistons too that, uh, if they do get too bad, I can just throw those in. They should work. But, um, yeah, it is interesting seeing how these things fail. There's, that's the splash paddle there. Tiny little bit of rust on it, but it's alright. All the same. The matching bolts for it. 
that just bolts on the very front of the crankshaft is in this sort of area right here so it just collects oil and just slings it around the whole inside of the other uh, crankcase in there and that's how they uh, that's how the lubrication works like there's an oil pump from a uh, a mycom reciprocating compressor uh, it's similar to that but probably stood up to about here that's what I used to work on at my old job, but now it's only little ones like this, so uh, they don't have those in them, they have these. So, uh, as well as the motor rotor, so it's a fairly large rotor. Um, I'm actually thinking I might use that for the coupling, given that it's got the uh, the, the right sized um, bore in it. Like that's, that's a press fit, which is uh, what I need along with the, the key too. I'm going back and forth with parts by the way because I've got it all over the place but so that's the uh yeah that's the rotor from it. Uh, can't really show much it's just a solid lump of steel. And there's the stator which I'm going to um remove. I'm gonna heat this casing up. I'm gonna uh, suspend it by the chain block. Probably put a bar in there and actually hold on to it somehow and then heat this up and hopefully it'll expand just enough to let go and then I'll be able to uh, reef it out but if that doesn't work um, I might have to resort to uh, cutting it which I really don't want to do just split it maybe up here uh, even though it is cast iron so I don't really want to do that because I'll have to weld it um, and cast iron is a nightmare to weld it's just porous and just, yeah, it won't seal properly either. So, uh, get it set up. Uh, we'll take that terminal box off since we're not going to need that anymore. And, uh, get into it. Here's a quick look inside the terminal box. Here's your main three phase connections here. Here's your L1, 2 and 3. Or U, V and W. Here's your earth lug. And over here you got a, um... A little overload for the motor. Something heavy floating around inside it. But, uh, that appears to be alright. Doesn't look like there's anything wrong with that. But they are uh, they only ever work for a certain amount of time before uh the motor just burns out anyway. You get a uh, little hot spot on the stator. But, uh, that's essentially it. That connects in there. It's all very rusty too. Probably uh, wouldn't have been helping things either. There's a, uh, this little diagram for you on the lid. Essentially all there is to it. Okay, that took a hell of a lot of work, probably more than what it was actually worth, but managed to get the stator out of the casing. Now, I will, will confess, I did have to split part of it. I didn't end up going all the way through, but I am going to need to weld that up. Um, I figure I'll just run a nice long bead all the way down that length and then grind it flat. Since I did it to the top, not the bottom, so it's uh, not going to be holding oil against it. Um, but yeah, stator's out. I end up having to put a piece of wood on either side and then make up a, uh, a puller. This bit of steel here. That's why it's always good to have little bits of steel hanging around. You never know when it'll come useful. But I put that, um, attach that to this little piece here, which is attached to this, uh, it's actually a shaft off of another electric motor, but I'd used it as the, uh, puller bar two holes in the actual windings, since windings are shot so it doesn't matter um, and then yeah just reef on it while heating it up with the torch since gravity didn't work and also pounding on it with a uh, rubber mallet that didn't work either so a uh, small split and uh, a bit of heat especially down this bottom area I've got to repaint it anyway so I don't care too much about burning the paint um, and yeah, excessive force is what uh, gets these things apart. There's plenty of copper in there too. By a um, 
some new tools or something with that, scrap money. Yeah, got to clean out the inside of that. So there's the main bearing down there. There's the oil hole. So these have liquid oil in them. They are uh, continuously flushed. <coughs> there's your suction ports there. That's where it runs through from the, uh, the header here. So, I'm going to call this part one. Um, clean it up in the next video and start putting it back together. And uh, then look at modifying it. So hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for part two. And thanks for watching.